Hey guys, welcome back to a new video and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create an object throw system inside Unreal Engine. Here you can see we can throw this ball around this level with this throwing animation and also we have this projectile path which will predict where the ball will land and you can also run around with this throwing animation which really looks nice and you can also download this project from my Patreon where you'll get all the animations, assets that I'm going to use in this video. The link is in the description. So before we do that, first let me show you that I already have these animations which we are going to use to throw the objects and you must have these two animations to make it smooth. The first animation is the loop animation of aiming. You can also use a single frame of the pose and the second one is the actual throwing animation which we will play when we throw the object. You can get these animation if you download my project from the Patreon. I created these animation myself otherwise you can also find similar one from websites like Mixamo. So first go to your character blueprint and here add a static mesh component. Let's name this throwable and shift it under the mesh. And in the parent socket, search for your character's hand. We are going to select the left hand and this component is going to attach with your character's hand as you can see here. So now just select your throwable mesh. I am just going to use the ball from the engine's content and adjust your component size and position accordingly. Make sure it fits perfectly in your hand. Once you are satisfied, you can just remove the static mesh from here. So let's go to the event graph and get the E key. You can use better way to handle inputs but just for the sake of tutorial I'm gonna use this. So when we press the E key the first thing we are going to do is to set this staring match to that ball so we can see it in our character's hand. So get this throwable component and search for set staring match. Then select your throwable match from here. Now the next thing we are going to do is play the animation montage. So we are going to play this loop animation so we can aim. But here you can see you can't see any such animation. That's because we haven't created any animation montage yet. So right click on your animation and then create animation montage. Let's do the same with our throw animation. So now here you can see we have this animation montage shown up here. Just select that loop animation. Also set the play rate to zero so it can play it infinitely. And get your mesh and connect it to the skeletal mesh component. So now when we will release the E button, we want to throw the object and to throw the object, we are going to play the throw animation. So duplicate it from here and select your throw animation from here. Set your play rate to 1 again so it can end. So now let's test how it works till now. Let's press the E key and release it. And here you can see it is playing the animation perfectly fine. But here is one problem. As soon as we start to run, the legs aren't moving. Of course because it's an whole body animation. So to fix this, let's go to your animation blueprint and in the anim graph, search for the new pose cache. Let's name this animation and replace it with the output pose. And down here search for the layered blend per bone and connect it to the output pose. Now this node will blend two animations between the lower and the upper half of the body. So in the layer setup add an element and here it needs the bone name from where two animations should be differentiated. So in our character it is going to be the spine 01. So right click and copy the bone name and paste it here. Now for the base pose we are going to use this animation cache as it's taking all the animation from the state machine. So search for use cache and get this animation cache and connect it to the base pose. And for the blend pose we are going to get this animation cache and then search for the default slot. This default slot is being used for the animation montage. So it is going to blend our state machine animations and the animation montage. You can remove this default slot from up here and you're good to go. And now when you will run with this throw animation, your lag animations are also working. So here in the throw animation, here let's try to find a frame where we are going to release the object from our hand. I think this frame is perfect for that. So in the notify section, right click, add notify and select montage notify. Let's name this throw. Now here in on notify begin, we want to throw that object out of the character's hand. So for that, let's get the throwable component and set static mesh and select none. So the ball will be disappeared from the character's hand. After that we are going to spawn the actor of class. So here we need the blueprint class of the throwable object which we wanna throw in the world. So here let's create the blueprint class of actor type. Let's name this throwable BB and here let's add a static mesh. I'm gonna call this ball and then select your throwable mesh from here and then scale it if it's too big and then scroll somewhere down here and check this simulate physics and if you come a more later down here you can select your physics material it means how it will react to the surface so here you can create your own but i'm just going to use this rubber physics material it works fine for me so back to here so from here you can select your throwable bp which you are going to spawn in the world to throw it and then you can split its transform so for the location as soon as you throw it you want to spawn it on the character's hand from where it was grabbing it so get your throwable component and search for get world location and connect it to the location transform and now from the return value you are going to get this ball component of this throwable bp and to this ball component you are going to add the impulse 
So it is going to add an impulse force to a ball and here we need to specify the direction for it. So get the camera manager, through that search for the camera rotation and then get its forward vector. Then you can multiply it, right click and convert it to the float. Let's multiply it by 1000 and connect it to the impulse. Now it will add an impulse force to a ball to the direction of where we are looking through the camera. Then search for set actor rotation and get the control rotation and plug it to the parameter. This will rotate our character to the direction where we are throwing. And now let's see how it works till now. Alright so here let's aim and throw. Here you can see it is working quite fine. We can throw the ball around the world but we want to throw the ball a little bit high because we need to look all the way up just to throw the ball a little bit high. So to fix that let's go back here and let's have some changes in these values. So let's break the vector here, split the structure and then connect x to x, y to y because we just need to change the z parameter. Then break the forward vector, get its z value and search for map range and clamp. Now here we are going to map the value a little bit higher than the original. Since we know the forward vector is between 0 to 1, so we are going to map the 0, 1 to 3 to 10. Then get the return value and multiply it with some bigger value. Let's say 150 and then connect it to the z parameter. So now if we try to throw the ball, here you can see it is going a little bit more higher and it's looking more realistic. Alright so now let's create a separate custom event to draw a projectile path. I'm gonna name this draw projectile curve. Then search for the set timer by event, set the time to 0.01 and check the looping. Then create a delegate, I'm going to name this update projectile curve. Now this time is going to call this delegate again and again every 0.01 seconds in a loop. And then search for the predict projectile path advance, here it is and then break its structure. And here it needs the start location and the launch velocity. So the start location is going to be where the throwable component is. So get the throwable and then get its world location. It is going to be our start location and for the launch velocity it is going to be the impulse force that we are adding to the ball. So copy all of this and paste it here. Split the structure of the parameter and connect it the same way you did up there. Here you need to take this boolean to trace the collision and you can tweak some value according to how you need your projectile path. And down here make an array and connect the self reference since you want your own character not to conflict with the projectile path. And here I am going to set the same frequency to 13. Also let's set the debug type to for one frame since we wanna see where the projectile path is going. And the debug time to 5. So now let's call this draw projectile curve event just when we start to aim right here. So search for the draw projectile curve and here we go. So now if we aim, here you can see these debug spheres which are drawing a projectile path where a ball is going to land. So the projectile path is working quite fine. Alright since we know it's working fine, we can turn off the debugging from here. And now after that, let's break this structure and from the part data, search for for each loop since we are going to iterate for the each curve point. Now before that, we must have a spline component. So let's add a spline component from here and I'm going to name this projectile spline and drag it under the throwable. Now get the projectile spline and search for the add spline point. Now it needs a position where that spline point must be added. First change the coordinate space to world and then break this array element. Now we are going to use this projectile path location one by one through this iteration to add the spline points. Now once we are done with that, we are going to run a for loop where it requires a first and the last index. For the first index, we are going to set it to 1 because our max sim time is also 1. And the last index is going to be the number of spline point. So for that, get the spline component and search for the get number of spline point and use it as the last index. Now for the each iteration, we are going to add the spline mesh component. So this is going to add a starting mesh to the each point of the spline point. So we need a starting mesh to use it as a projectile path and here I already have it. Here you can see it's a cylinder shaped mesh with a transparent white material. If you want to make one inside under engine, you can go to modeling mode and select the cylinder, place it in the world, then set its radius to 5 and height to 10. Here you can see it's a similar one. So you can just save this and then when you'll right click and browse the asset, you'll see it is saved in your project. So if you want to make a white transparent material, you can just set your blend mode to translucent and you'll get this immersive color and opacity parameter here. Then you can hold 3 to get this 3 vector and then set your white color from here. Then plug it into the base color and the massive color. And for the opacity, hold 1 and set the value from 0 to 1 scale, let's say 0.4 and then connect it to your opacity. 
and then you can just set that material to your cylinder now coming back to this select your steering mesh from here and then after that let's right click on the return value and promote this to variable i'm gonna name this spline mesh and from here make sure to convert it to the array then get your spline mesh search for the add and connect your return value here now we are going to save the each spline mesh at every point of the spline so that later we can clear it now from the return value search for the set start and end now it is going to make the curve in your spline mesh through the given parameters so get the spline component and then search for the get location and tangent at spline point change the coordinate space to world and connect the loop index with the point index then duplicate this node and this time from the index plus one and then connect it to the point index as it is going to be the next point on the spline now from the first node connect location to the start position and tangent to the start tangent but for the end position and tangent we are going to lerp it between the location of first point and the next point with the alpha value of 0.5 means the point between these two locations and we are going to connect it with the end position then duplicate the lerp and do the same with the tangent and connect the return value to the end tangent now we are almost done with it we just need to create a custom event to clear the spline mesh so let's create a custom event here i'm gonna name this clear spline points then get your spline mesh and then search for destroy component you can uncheck this context sensitive button from here and you'll find it and after that search for clear and then get your spline component and search for the clear spline points so now we just need to call this event just before we draw the projectile path. So search for the clear spline points and there you go. And here make sure you check this manual attachment boolean otherwise you can get some warnings and all. And also here you need to promote this timer to a variable. Let's name this projectile timer. And here we need to clear that projectile timer otherwise it will keep drawing the projectile path and will never stop. So get the projectile timer and search to clear it. And also you can call this clear spline point event just after you throw the object. So now if we throw the object, you can see we also have this projectile path to show where the ball will land and it's also looking quite nice. And if you appreciate my work, you can support me on Patreon and you will also get access to all the project files I ever made for these tutorial videos just by joining my Patreon membership. The link is in the description. You can also join my Discord server where you can interact with other game developers of this community and also me. All the links are in the description and if this video helped you out, you can like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and i want to thank the patreon member of this month which is tasty vegan thank you so much for your support i really appreciate it till then see you bye bye